Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at what the beta range is on a turboprop. And apparently the weather comes in quick in these places. <laughs> we're going to be doing this on the Cessna 208 today. Now it's kind of important that I kind of lead with this a little bit, that the beta range on the throttles and turboprops and a lot of flight sims, because of the nature of the flight sim, makes it a little bit difficult to simulate accurately. And I'll kind of go over that when we get into it. Let's go ahead and get started. So we're sitting here in a lovely Cessna 208. Uh, this is a big, big, big plane. Um, it's one of those things where I always get tickled by this plane because you look at the older versions when there wasn't even like instrumentation as far as GPSs, and now it's like G1000s and G3000s. So it's amazing. And also they got really powerful, like 950 horsepower. Anyway, let's put our heads down over here to the throttle here. Now there's a bunch of different controls on here, and I'm sure many of you are familiar with them as far as control scope, but we're going to take a look at some of the weird spots. First of all, you probably notice on the far, far, far left, there is an emergency power setting. Now this particular aircraft, uh, when you pop this out of this mode, you can actually manually set how much fuel goes to the engine. Now this is interesting because the amount of fuel flow to the engine is going to dictate its speed and acceleration. So that's actually kind of neat. There's a manual one. You had to really break something, by the way, to need that one. The one right here, this is uh, not a throttle. Uh, you're wrong, Microsoft. It's a power lever. It's a a totally different thing than a throttle. Basically what you're doing here is you're selecting uh, how much torque we should be using, except when you're in the beta range. So now the beta range is a special range for turboprops, and many turboprops have it, where you directly control the angle of the blade. So the reason we have that capability is when I nudge this throttle forward, I should say the power level forward, what you'd normally be doing is the aircraft, if it was in beta mode, which by the way, you have to make sure it's in low idle or ground idle is what you say, I would actually be twisting the propeller blade so that it takes a bigger bite out of the air, which enables us to start floating forward. Now, if I pulled this handle backwards, I could actually pull it back so far that the blades of the actual propeller would reverse direction and actually prevent us from actually having forward thrust and then give us reverse thrust. So imagine for a second my propeller blade is spinning at 100 RPM right now. When I push my throttle forward when I'm in my low idle position, what you'd be doing is keeping it at 100 RPM and then causing this blade to bite more air, giving us forward thrust. Leaving it in low idle and then taking the handle and pushing it backwards, what I would be doing is keeping it at the same RPM, but now twisting the blade reverse to give us reverse thrust. The combination of this inside of this beta range gives us the ability to control our taxi speed extremely, extremely precisely. Now, it's worth noting that depending on the turboprop, some of the times this behavior is a little bit different. But one thing you're going to see almost universally is you want to be in the low idle position. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to disengage my parking brake. Now, I've gone ahead and done that. Now, normally the way they have this set is when your power lever is at the bottom position like it is right now, we should have no thrust whatsoever. We should just be sort of hanging out here. Now, what would happen is I'd push this to the top of the beta range, and that would be just enough thrust to get this thing moving at kind of a gentle rate. Now, you'll probably see, um, for whatever reason, even though the propeller blades have twisted here, I'm not really going very quick here. I'm kind of surprised by all that. And it should give us just um, So I'm going to actually push it out of beta, which will cause our main RPM to kind of kick in here as it's desperately there it goes as it gets us going. So now I'm going to go ahead and pull the throttle back into the middle of the beta range, which causes the propeller blades to basically get into a neutral position here. Now, if I need to increase my speed a little bit, all I have to do is push my throttle while maintaining in that range, and our RPM shouldn't really change, but our speed taxing should. Now, the moment I chop it back to the zero position, the almost the bottom of the beta range, we have no additional thrust or pure momentum. Now, let's say I'm coming up to the line here. I don't want to go ahead and slow down. Now, normally, of course, you reach and grab the brakes, but because we're in beta, I can put the propeller blades to actually twist them the other way and slow us down. So I'm actually got ourselves pulled all the way back. Now, notice the aircraft slows right bound down, down. And if I actually look down on here on the ground, you'll see that I'm in the back half of the beta range. Now that I'm out of beta, I can now push it forward again, and I can continue on making myself forward. So let me show you straight why this is so incredibly helpful. And again, I'm still in that low idle mode here. Whoa! Let's try to keep our control here. There we go. So let's go ahead and get ourselves a pretty good amount of motion here. I'll put us to the top of the beta range here. So we're making pretty good time. I'll go ahead and overdo it just a little bit. There we go. Kind of get rolling. And again, I'm not going to touch my brakes once. And I'm going to taxi myself all the way to the runway. Now this looks pretty good. Coming up on my turn, I'm going to go ahead and leave it in beta. Go ahead and throw it in reverse here. And you can see that my speed comes right on down. Pretty good. Coming out of that, finishing that turn, I'm going to go ahead and pull it out of reverse, pop it up to the top of the beta range again. And off forward again we go. Now I have not, oh, that's interesting. 
Now, I have not at any point touched my brakes. I am completely going based on going to the top of the beta and the bottom of the beta by reversing and everything like that. So let's say now we're coming up to this runway. Of course, there's a van there that's in my way. I'm going to go ahead and go backwards. Again, I have a button. I'm just pushing it all the way forward. I'm going to slow down and actually manage to come to a complete stop. I'm going to go ahead and kick this out. I'm going to engage my regular brake here. I'm going to go ahead and take us out of that range. Now, you're probably saying, well, that's actually pretty useful. You have a lot of control over the speed you have on the ground. And from what I've been told, uh, people on turbo props actually have even more control than even the control I was demonstrating. Now, let's say we pop ourselves from low idle up to what they call flight idle. Now, the first thing that's going to happen is we're going to order the governor and the engine to go ahead and spool up significantly greater amounts of power, which is going to improve the response of our engine. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and push the throttle forward. And you can see it takes a teeny tiny little touch, and this thing is ripping along. Now, if I go into the beta a reverse position and jam it all the way backwards, you can see that the response is significantly quicker on account of the fact that we have so much more power at our disposal because our gas generator is working harder. The other thing you probably notice is I've actually left it inside of this range at flight idle, let go, and notice we're rolling on our own. Now, because of the way Microsoft Flight Simulator simulates this aircraft, unfortunately, we don't have that let's go, let's go, that you would typically get in those taxiing speeds, but you can see what happens. The final thing we'll take a look at with the beta range is I'm gonna go ahead and turn this around real quickly here. Actually, wait a minute, let's do something extremely dangerous. <laughs> Y'all sitting there going, what could be more dangerous? Oh my God, he's doing the dangerous thing. <laughs> Don't push the brake. Don't push the brake. Don't push the brake. Just hit the power. <laughs> nice. As you're probably asking, um, what happens if your aircraft is in ground idle when you attempt a takeoff? Well, the good news is uh, once you exceed a certain portion of that range, the um, engines, uh, the controls on it, are actually smart enough to give you normal response. The only issue you'll have is it will take a lot longer for the engine to actually catch up to the proper RPM. So again, I'll go ahead and pop that back into ground idle. You'll notice my RPM will come down significantly, basically the bottom. My speed's going to come down. My RPM's going to come down significantly. Now, if I'm ready for takeoff, I can go ahead and I'll push that throttle forward all the way. And the biggest problem we're going to face is the fact that um, the RPM is just going to take a much longer time to spool because it was not ready to be in that particular position. It just takes us longer to get that gas generator all the way up to the proper position. Woohoo! <laughs> so remember when I was fitting with the trim earlier? <laughs> now that's what I call a short takeoff. Now, some of you are probably saying, is it okay to use reverse and landing? Um, absolutely. Um, that's one of the intended purposes of that particular device, is to be able to uh, reduce your landing roll. And uh, also, after you've done your landing roll, then you can pull it back down into that ground idle position, and then you could use that beta range again to control your speed on the ground. Enjoy.